भीम एंड हनुमान लाइफ इन द जंगल वॉज डिफिकल्ट but dropati looked after the needs of the five brothers and they all lived happily one day a gentle breeze blew over the forest bringing the scent of an uncommon flower hmm. sighed the beautiful dropati as she breathed in the sweet perfume i must have those flowers i will request bhim to go and get them for me Do you expect me to go in search of some silly flowers? Never. Scoffed Bhim. It was only when he saw the tears in her lovely eyes that he consented to go. The mighty Bhim could not bear to see Draupadi unhappy. The next day, Bhim was on his way. Nobody could tell him where they grew, but Bhim knew that he should walk in the direction from which the wind blew. It was the wind which had carried the sweet perfume of the flowers to Draupadi. Bhim had to pass through a thick forest. He had to make his way forward by cutting down tall trees and breaking up huge rocks with his heavy club. How strong he was! But he made such a commotion with all the cutting and breaking that even the wild animals got frightened and ran away. After trudging for many miles, Bhim came to a beautiful garden. Suddenly, he saw an old monkey lying on the ground right across his path, blocking his way. "What is this silly monkey doing?" he thought to himself. He tried to shoo it away, but the monkey lay still. "Didn't you hear me?" said Bhim. Move out of my way before I do something to you. The monkey slowly opened one eye and then the other and looked at Bhim up and down. I'm too old and have no strength to move, said the monkey. Why don't you walk round me and move on? Bhim drew himself up haughtily, standing tall and straight. Have you heard of the mighty Bhima, the great Pandava? I am he. I always walk a straight path. I never admit defeat. Said Bhim. The monkey looked unimpressed. I am old and sick. Besides, your big talk makes me laugh. You say you never admit defeat. What happened to you when the Kauravas drove you out of your kingdom? <laughs> Never admit defeat. Mocked the monkey. Stop talking nonsense! Shouted the angry Bhim. You're a silly monkey that jumps from one tree to another. What do you know about losing a kingdom? People would only laugh at me if they heard Bhima wasting time. talking to a silly old monkey he scoffed then the monkey said a big man like you should not quarrel with an old and tired monkey you can easily jump over me and carry on with your journey or if you like you can move my tail to one side If you don't want to touch my dirty tail, why don't you push it aside with your club? Suppose your tail snaps. Suppose your club breaks in two. Snapped back the monkey. Now Bhim was furious, putting his big club below the monkey's thin, dirty brown tail with one hand. He tried to raise it. the tail did not move bhim looking a bit confused tried to raise the tail once more with his club now using both his hands the tail did not budge a scowl appeared on bhim's face concentrating bhim used all his strength he pulled with all his might but all in vain the tail stayed where it was 
Bhim decided to pull the club away from that part of the tail and use it at another part of the tail. But to his dismay, the club would not come out. Bhim grunted, puffed and panted. But the club seemed to have a mind of its own. It stayed where it was. Beads of perspiration on his brow and breathing hard, Bhim now looked at the monkey. The monkey lay there, watching Bhim, smiling calmly, as if nothing had happened. Bhim was confused as two thoughts flashed across his mind. How could such a small, weak old monkey be equal to his own mighty strength? What would people say if they came to know that Bhim had been defeated by a monkey? Who are you? Bhim thundered at the monkey, looking at him suspiciously. No monkey can ever have such supreme strength. You either have magical powers or you are the devil himself. Rise! I challenge you to a duel! He cried. The monkey, smiling to himself, said, I am not devil, nor do I have magical powers. I am Hanuman, the servant of the great Rama, who killed Ravana. So saying, the monkey got up and grew and grew into the huge form of Hanuman. The astonished Bhim could only stand and stare. Forgive me, please. How could I challenge the mighty Hanuman? Said the red-faced Bhim, ashamed as he bent down to touch Hanuman's feet. Hanuman caught him in an embrace. The two hugged each other. I've been wanting to meet you for a long time. I saw you coming. I blocked your path deliberately so that I could talk to you and get to know you, Bhima. The rest was all in fun. Forget about it since we are friends now. Bhim now told Hanuman the reason for his journey. Hanuman laughed. So, you are not going to kill another giant or fight a battle? You go to pick flowers for your wife. What a big adventure for the great Bhim. I will delay you no further. Bhim took leave of Hanuman and continued with the journey. He at last came to the place, a beautiful garden with a lake inside it. The flowers grew in the lake. The garden and the lake belonged to Kubera, the richest man on earth. He had an army there to guard the flowers. In the lake were hundreds of fierce-looking crocodiles guarding the flowers. It was a tough battle, fighting both the guards and the dangerous crocodiles. But at last, Bhim could reach the flowers and pluck as many of the fragrant blossoms as he could carry. Bhim returned home. He gave the delighted Draupadi the flowers she had longed for. Draupadi was thrilled to have those rare flowers and Bhim was satisfied that he had made Draupadi so happy.